they were in this little clearing in the forest behind his house. So I just went up the hill in the bushes and I'm like behind this tree with my camera on a tripod. I just have a picture of Woody flipping me off. Uh, Woody from Toy Story Definitely flipping me, me off. I'm the Michael Jordan of photography guy. Hey. Welcome back, everybody, to Bluntly Bears. Today, I have another special guest with me. Uh, I got Abel Jones here, everybody. Woo. What's up, guys? How you doing? <laughs> got the live crowd reaction, you know. It's great. Um, anyways, uh, Abel, man, it's been a few years, so this is kind of interesting. It's been since, like, what, JCPenney, right? Yeah, JCPenney. Yeah. I was actually trying to figure out the exact amount of time as you were coming over here because I think it's been like three, four years. Yeah. When, when did you stop working there? Um, three, four years ago. Three, four, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was, so I've been my current company for like two and a half years. I was at another company for a year before that. So at least like three and a half years. Cool. Is, yeah. I've, that's been almost three years since I, I moved up to Washington to uh, Long Beach Peninsula. So yeah. yeah, well, uh, we can dive right to it, man. Like, uh, obviously, we work together in the retail space for a cut for a few months. Good old customer service. Good old customer service. Uh, what have you been up to since uh, since we last, I guess, saw each other? So I spent a long time not really sure what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah. Um, I got interested in photography back in high school, so like basically 10 years ago at this point i was trying to think i during jc penny days you were you were doing some photo stuff I on was, the side right yeah um it's really grown since then uh, yeah. high school started out with photography just you know for fun i took a class my dad's a photographer so nice I, I got into it because of him and then right after high school i tried to start doing it professionally and so when i knew you at petty's i was still kind of in that those early stages, but it had definitely grown and it's definitely grown a lot more since then. But my big drive for moving back to Portland is I would like to attend uh, Multnomah in mm. uh, Bible College. I think it's Bible Multnomah University. It's a, it's a Christian college. Nice. Um, I'm hoping to get uh, 30 credit hours of Bible classes and then I'm hoping to uh, join a nonprofit organization and do some work with them. That's awesome. That's awesome. You're making me feel uh, feel guilty for not doing as much as, as you are uh, nah, to, to serve and, and, and kind of work on stuff. But that's that's really cool. I guess where is that, like where did that drive come through? Where, where did the idea come come from to kind of go with a nonprofit route? So um, I my, my parents work for a nonprofit and growing up, when I when I was four, we moved to Northwest Africa because All my right. parents were working for a nonprofit called Ideas at the time. Um, so we moved to Northwest Africa to work with this nonprofit. And I say we; it was my parents. I was four at the <laughs> time, there, so right. <laughs> yeah, I, I was there. Um, and I yeah, I was just living life, going to school, making friends. But that's been a big part of my life, and I've seen the effect it's had on my parents. I've seen the effect it's had on the people around my parents, the people my parents have worked with. Um, and I, I would like to be able to have that kind of impact. I also, like looking back on my life, I've seen the impact it's had on my upbringing. Mm -hmm. And I would like to hopefully be able to provide something like that for my future kids, if there are any, hopefully. <laughs> Lord willing. <laughs> Bless. Any single ladies listening to this? Uh, no, just kidding. Hit me uh, up. <laughs> um, no, that's that's really cool. Uh, just it, it's funny because the more people I talk to, the more I realize how much upbringing and like parents have to do with the route people end up going. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool that you were able to see that from like an early age, and uh, and and kind of you know start looking looking at other ways you can you can help out too. So, um. I want to hit the photography piece. You said, you know, ever since high school, you've been doing this and it's, it's grown a lot. Um, in, in recent years, I guess, can you, uh, can you tell me a little bit about that and how that's, how that's enrolled? Yeah. Uh, do you mean like 
like how it's grown in the past yeah. few years? Yeah. So I, a few years ago, spent about two years, I, I switched the camera that I had. I bought a new camera. Now, I want to say the equipment does not make the photographer. It helps. <laughs> but just because I had new equipment didn't make me grow as a better photographer. Um, it was nice to have new equipment, but around that same time, I had just booked a wedding. One of my best friends was getting married and they asked, they're like, do you want to be in the wedding party, like a groomsman, or do you want to be the photographer? And I'm like, I want to be the photographer. <laughs> like, really bad. So they hired me as the photographer and I'm like, I want to do a really good job. Was it your it's, first? It's, it's not what? my first wedding. I think it was probably my third or fourth. Okay. But the other weddings I had done were on a, a smaller scale. Okay. And they'd been more like, like further spread apart. Um, so this wedding was in 2020. The first wedding I did was 2018 in August. And then a year later also, it was like, I think it was the same day in August, a year later, I had my second wedding. <laughs> so this was my third wedding. Um, and I'd, you know, I was trying to learn my new, cause I had new equipment. I'm trying to learn all of the settings for my camera, um, and how to best use this equipment to do the job that I'm trying to do. So I went on YouTube as, as one does, uh, <laughs> to, to learn a new thing. And, uh, my friend actually sent me a video from this photographer. His name is John Branch for photography on YouTube. And he uses, so I shoot Fujifilm, which not a lot of Fuji wedding. Fo- yeah. Not a lot of wedding photographers use Fujifilm. You'll see Canon, Nikon, and Sony are like the big brands you'll see. Right. Especially for like wedding photographers. You don't see a lot of. Fuji, but this guy, John Branch, um, shoots Fuji and he does weddings and he's been doing weddings for years and he will strap a GoPro to his shoulder and record like a 10 hour day of him shooting a wedding and put it together into like an hour, hour and a half video on YouTube. And he tells you like, like, so you see what he's doing. He tells you what he's doing, why he's doing it. And then he'll show you some of the photos from that moment. So you get to see his whole process, his whole thought process, and the final results of that thought process. And so watching and kind of studying those videos, taking notes, helped me as a wedding photographer go from someone who like, you know, knows how to take photos and is happens to be shooting your wedding to yeah. like a wedding photographer. So it's not just about knowing how to take photos, but knowing how to be able to, you know, switch your settings to what you need for a specific point in the day and then being able to like keep up with the, the high pace of a wedding day. Yeah. Knowing when and where to be shooting to those kind of things. Yeah. When and where, um, being able to like keep an eye out for, for those those moments, you don't want to get too focused in on like what you're shooting. So if I am, let's say I'm doing photos of a first look. This is, you know, before the ceremony, this is the first time the groom is seeing the bride in the wedding dress. Um, They're both going to be emotional, but typically you usually have like the maid of honor or the best man there. They might be getting emotional too. And if I'm not also paying attention to them, I'm going to miss a great opportunity to get a photo of, of them in their feels, um, (laughs) which, you know, the couple would love to see if they get to see photos of, of them in their moment, but also see their best, their, their best yeah. friend, like going, Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> like, yeah, so, you have to be a lot more alert to those kind of situations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You have to be aware of what you're photographing, but also aware of your surroundings of what's around you. Um, and developing an eye to be able to know how to use your environment for those photos. Wow. That's really cool. So, Uh, You did that wedding for your friend um, and beforehand you watched that hour and a half video of someone else. He's got a lot up. He's, I think he has like four or maybe five full wedding videos at the time. I think he had three. I watched all three. Um, One of them was like 40 minutes. One was an hour and one was an hour and a half. So yeah, I think I watched about three hours or so of his videos. And, And then he has a bunch of other smaller videos about, like the Fujifilm system and different poses to go. 
So I watched his videos. I looked at some of the equipment he had, um, things I needed to get for my camera because the ones I had for my old camera wouldn't work, like my flash. Mm-hmm. So buying, you know, looking at the equipment he used, buying said equipment, and then learning how to use that in addition to my camera. That makes sense. So uh, after watching those videos, were there like distinct things that you changed or was it just kind of knowing the workflow and kind of figuring out exactly what you'd be doing that those helped you with? Yeah, um, it changed a bit how I do things. My preparation process going into a wedding is more, I don't want to say sophisticated, that's not really the right word, but I kind of was going from not really knowing what I'm doing and just going, more all right, organized. well, I, I have, yeah, more organized. I'm like, I have my equipment and now I'm like, all right, I got my equipment. I got all this. This is, you know, I've got a itinerary of the day. I know what I'm doing, where I need to be and when. Nice. So yeah, so more organized going into it. Yeah. Yeah. So after that first wedding, did it, it, it did it feel different than the first couple that you did? Very different. It also really helped that it was like one of my best friends. And so like, all of the groomsmen, like my my main best friend was like the best man. So it's like two of my best friends and then all of their friends that I also know. So that really helped with it to go smoothly. Um, but there are a few things that I changed up because of like this guy's videos. Mm-hmm. So in previous weddings, um, during the reception, during the dancing time, it, and it's not necessarily wrong to do this, but... For, you know, if you know me and you know my personality, standing on the sidelines, taking <laughs> photos from like the side of the dance floor of everyone dancing, some photographers will say, well, that's the more professional thing to do. And they'll do that because they're like, well, you know, I don't want to get in the way. I'm here to do my job and take photos. So I'm going to be really regimented and super professional. Right. And stand on the sidelines of the dance floor and take photos. But what I like to do is I like to put on like a a wide angle lens, put my flash on because it's usually dark or it's inside and put my flash on my camera and get on the dance floor and dance and take photos. And, And to me, I like those photos a lot more than being on the sideline because the types of photos you get when you're there in the middle of it, when you look at them, it gives you a sense that you are there like watching these, this person do the war worm or whatever <laughs> um you're you feel like you're there in the moment um and part of that is the angle the the fact that it's a wide lens or what you're seeing it feels like it's up close so that's something i picked up from this guy's videos that i personally really like and it's something i adopted and so far out of all the weddings i've done i've heard nothing but good things about me doing that people have said you know we we loved seeing you like out dancing with everyone else while taking photos. And the photos that you got from that moment were amazing. We loved them. So being able to have that positive feedback for this thing that I adopted, it it's good. I like it. And it yeah. encourages me to, to keep going in that manner. Yeah. It's like you said, less sidelines, less like you're at the aquarium just looking in, but more like you're diving in and you're part of it. And I can definitely see that being a more entertaining video to see. Yeah. Um, it's like going on the, on the court with the basketball players it's, it's, rather than being on, on, on the sidelines. Obviously, that's a more interesting shot to get. Yeah. Um, so and, and I'm sure that wedding when it was, you know, a lot of your best friends there, like it made it easier for you to, to, to ease into that. Yeah, it, it definitely it was a lot yeah, it was a lot easier. It was a lot more natural. I didn't feel less like awkward. Um, there was a, a wedding last summer that I was the the second photographer for. Yeah. So the main photographer hired me to assist her in photographing this wedding. Um, and, you know, she was just getting back into photography. She had taken a break. She had kids. Mm-hmm. And so she... Usually when you have a second photographer, it's a lot more like, so like with my second photographer, I kind of have a list of shots and like areas that I want them to kind of monitor. And so I kind of tell them what I need from them. But when I was the second photographer for this, this other photographer, she kind of gave me free reign to do what I want to do. So 
for the dancing I got to be out on the dance floor but it took a little bit like they're, they're like all right now like everyone can come dance and they're playing music and no one is going and I'm just like you're the only one in the floor I'm, with a camera <laughs> except, except I'm not dancing at that point no one, I'm like all right we're just gonna kind of like vibe a little and hopefully someone will come out <laughs> and like two people would come and dance briefly and then like stop and I'm like come, come on come on dance <laughs> So, so that was a little awkward, um, and eventually everyone was dancing. But it, at the start there, it was it was hard to be out on the dance floor when almost no one else was wanting to go out and do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, uh, weddings when they're all really active and like they're like it's time for everyone to dance. Everyone goes out and dances. It's a lot easier to also go out and dance and take photos at the same time. So. Yeah, I get that. I I recently started playing in a wedding band nice. and it's uh well I've only done a couple gigs but like when the the attendees definitely send that set the atmosphere a lot. So when it's like everyone's out there and enjoying it, you're definitely vibe more and you're more free. Yeah. Uh versus when everyone's just like like stiff, you know, it's kind of hard to be as open. Yeah. Um I tend to not care and just be open anyways, but the rest of the band definitely <laughs> Steps up. Uh, what, no. uh, what instrument you play? I play bass. Oh, uh, see, yeah. yeah, the the bassist. There's, I feel like there's a joke about bassists where they're like either like super into it or like not into it at all. Yeah, it's like sometimes you like everyone else is dancing and the bassist is just there. It's like, uh, and then sometimes he's like the bassist is the most energetic. I think I'm I'm in the latter. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like that. <laughs> Try to set the tone. Um, that's the way to go. <laughs> Uh, I think I think you and I would get along at a wedding for sure. Hundred <laughs> um, percent. No, that's that's really cool, man. So after that wedding, uh, when when things started changing, uh, were your uh, inquiries and your bookings just flooding in, or or how, really how did no. things go from there? <laughs> no, um, I'm still trying to work on on getting more inquiries. Uh, so I do like I I don't get enough to make a living off of. So it's it's definitely a hobby and a side gig at this point for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I don't think I would, I, like I could see myself doing it full time, but with what I want to do, like with my life, I don't think I want to do photography full time as fun as it would be just, and, and that's just for me personally, where, where I'm at and where I want to go with, with my life um, and like working at this nonprofit I think I like having photography as a side gig, sure. although I would like to get more bookings. So I, I did see an increase in bookings, not really for weddings though. I have seen a steady rise in weddings every year. So the first two years I was, you know, did weddings. I had one wedding a year and then right. that second year, I think I, I think I had two, but I might've only had I think I had like one that big one and then I had like a really small wedding. So there was an increase there, but COVID made that difficult. Right. And then 2021, I actually had the most weddings that I've done like in a year. So there was an increase there. And this year where we're at right now in the year, I'm on track to having more weddings than last. I'm really hoping happens. I lost a wedding back in April just because of some complications they had. They ended up not hiring a photographer. So, and I found out like a week before. <laughs> so I was Same. like, I was ready to go. I was like studying all. I like, I, I rewatched this guy's videos before every wedding just to like refresh it in my mind. Um, and so I was like, I was starting to watch the videos. I was getting ready. And then they're like, yeah, we can't. I'm like, <laughs> oh. oh man that's tough um, so that's a little bit of a setback on my my goal to have more weddings this year than last year but there's still time yeah that's that makes sense how do people um how do they normally find you is it like through social media or word of mouth or so i've been i've been actually working on on revamping that and i i'm actually pretty happy where i'm at right now with it originally it was mostly word of mouth I had some business cards that I had made. Um, they weren't my favorite. Looking back, I'm like, <laughs> I, the business cards I have now, I like a lot more. Uh, 
But I, yeah, I had some business cards, but it was mostly word of mouth. Uh, and then like Instagram, Facebook, sure. um, and just reaching someone's like getting engaged. I'm like, you guys need a photographer. Let me know. Like, hey. Um, but now I, you know, I got a link tree in my bio on Instagram. Uh, I have a website and on my website, there's an inquiry form that connects to, there's this program called HoneyBook. I don't know if you've heard of not. HoneyBook. I really like HoneyBook. They make it so easy. This is a free plug for you, HoneyBook. I am not, <laughs> not sponsored, sponsored by them. <laughs> <laughs> Although, actually, I just got a reference code. Um, so I, I think I, I earned enough through bookings on HoneyBook that now... I have a code or I have like a link I can send to people and they get HoneyBook for like a dollar a month for the first six months or something like that. Uh, but I'm not sponsored by them. <laughs> uh, but I, I really like them. They, they're great for bookkeeping and just booking and planning. Uh, my email is linked to them so I can send out my contract. I can send out an invoice or a brochure for like products that I do all in HoneyBook. And so, like, if, if you were to, to contact me through my website, it's actually a form that I created in HoneyBook mm. and linked directly in my website. So, you go on my website, you fill the form out, and it automatically populates all that information into a new inquiry in HoneyBook. So, everything is centralized in HoneyBook. I then go in, I can review that entry or that inquiry, and then I can send you you know, any information you need, like, Hey, like, thanks for reaching out here is, you know, here's what I would charge for what you're asking. Here's what's included in that package. So if it's like a wedding, maybe I'm going to be there for eight hours and I'll give you 300 photos afterwards. Um, I can send that, I can send an invoice and I can send my contract and then you can say, yeah, dude, this is great. Sign the contract, pay the deposit and we're in business. Or you can say, thank you for the information. Um, I'm good. And then I archive the project and yeah. Part ways. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, HoneyBook really streamlines it. I can send information. I can, you know, I can send you an email in HoneyBook and it sends it from my like personal email address okay. that I've linked to HoneyBook. So when you get it, you just get it as a regular email. And you can reply directly in that email chain. And I'll get that on my email, but I'll also get it in HoneyBook. Nice. So I can do everything I want inside HoneyBook. And uh, yeah, it's it just streamlines it so much. Inquiries are so much easier. I don't have to try to monitor a ton of different channels. Originally, when I first made my website, my inquiry form was through Squarespace. Mm which means that it was linked to a different email. So every time someone filled out that form interested in, in a photo shoot, I had to check that specific email. So I had to always monitor that. But now I don't even need to worry about that email because everything is directed through this one application. Goes to one space. Yeah. We'll have to throw in your reference code in the in the, in the description here. 100%. Get, get, get some, <laughs> some folks started. No, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's been able to streamline things a lot. Um, I think organization, whenever you're doing something like this, is super important. So it's cool that... I'm also just really bad at organization. <laughs> so that's one of the things I've actually been like really proud of. It's, it's good to be proud in yourself sometimes. Like, yeah. like not, not in a, in a like puffed up chest, sure. looking down your nose at someone proud. But like for, for me, I struggle with being organized and sometimes being on time. Not sometimes. A lot of the time being on time um, and just keeping track of things. My mind is a mess sometimes so having a program like this and like learning how to use it and kind of forcing everything into that because yeah. like i have people that will like message me like like my friend was like hey i want to do some photos you know my fiance and i are getting well boyfriend and i are getting engaged and we want photos and she messaged me on instagram and i'm like yes but go fill out this form yeah. <laughs> And then we'll talk. And so I, I'm like, yeah. And, yes. and at this point, I, I know the system enough that if you were to message me on Instagram about photos, I would just, you know, move it. Like we can have that discussion and then I'd move all the information over into HoneyBook. 
but if I can direct as many people as possible yes. to that initial inquiry form, it just makes it so much easier for me. It's it's so funny because I've always I've always struggled with organization and I like any interview I've had in the last few years. That's always been like what I told people was my weakness was like struggling with organization. Uh, so I've worked so hard to put as many systems in place around me to like fix my organization and yeah. like put things in my calendar, put things on a whiteboard, put 100%. things on a sticky note in front of me. And like the other day uh, we had a new hire at my work and my manager reached out to me and was like, Hey, can you like help her like be like, you know, her buddy or whatever while she's getting started. I know you're super good at organization. So like, you know, <laughs> it's going to be help out a lot. I'm like, do you even know me? But then I started can thinking about organization. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> sure you're not talking about this other guy yeah exactly i'm like wait a minute but i guess it's it's funny because like for so long i've I've seen it as like a weakness but when you like really focus your energy and like improving that it's cool like and put processes in place and put systems in place to help you out with that i I still fail in a lot of areas just ask my boss (laughs) (laughs) but but yeah i I have to do the same thing i'm like i i have to put a reminder in my phone i have to put on my calendar i have to like write it down i found that like externalizing things yes. so like physically writing it down less stuff in your head yeah, as possible really <laughs> helps me keep track of what i'm trying to do yeah i've gotten to a point where i'm almost anxious if i have something in my head but not written down so like yeah just setting a reminder like even like when we were like scheduling this i was like okay have to set a reminder for this date or like ask able to like fo- like figure out the time and all this yeah. stuff but yeah no i guess like you said externalizing as much of that as possible is uh is, is really important. So one question I had for you, and, and you've kind of touched on a, a few pieces already, like um, a lot of times, and I've realized this too, as I started doing music for a wedding is like, people just see you showing up to the wedding day, you like play or you shoot and then you leave and that's it. But there's so much more that goes behind the scenes, more work to like plan and to edit and all that stuff. So I'm curious, like on, on, on average, like how, how much time are you investing into a wedding? You know, I honestly don't know. I have a really bad try time to. I have a really bad time keeping track of of time, <laughs> like in my head. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I think something will take me five minutes to do, and it takes me like thirty. Sometimes I'm like, this is this is going to take me thirty minutes to do, and I do it in like five minutes. So I haven't actually sat down and like timed how long. Um, I mean, if it's an eight hour wedding day. That's eight hours right there, but I'm probably doing a good four or five hours prep time before. Um, and then however long it takes to edit, I typically, typically I'll tell people to allow four to six weeks to get their wedding photos. And my goal is to have it done in like three or four weeks. Most of that is also though, just because because of my current job, I can't really do editing during the day. Like Friday and Saturday are my days to edit. And then sometimes in the evenings. So yeah, it's like, it's, you know, maybe half an hour, an hour a day, if you were to average that out. So I think, I mean, we're probably looking at, you know, at least 10 hours of editing, maybe more. Um, Again, I'm really bad at keeping track of time. So sometimes what feels like, oh, I've been editing for an hour and it's actually been like 30 minutes or the other way sure. around. Yeah. But it, it is very much a time consuming process. So, yeah. And that's really yeah. what people are paying you for more than just coming up and showing yeah. up and shooting a wedding, right? So, yeah. One of the things that's difficult is. Sometimes if you're looking at photographers, you can be like, wow, they're charging a lot of money to come and take, you know, click a button for eight hours. But so much more goes into that. Yeah. You're, you're not just paying for me to be there and click a button for eight hours, but you're also paying for the the hours and hours and years, honestly, it took for me to like learn how to use right. my camera, learn how to take photos. You're not just paying for the... Uh, you know the hours you're also paying for the equipment you're also paying for you know the time it took me to develop my photographic eye to be able to see something and say you know if we shoot this from this angle or if we do this it's going to create this like magical image there's a lot that goes into it both hours learning the skill uh hours 
learning how to use your equipment, the cost of the equipment, the cost to actually shoot, and then, you know, the cost of, you know, I need to buy business cards to support my right. business. I need I need to also make a profit for myself. Like, you're hiring me to do a service. But then you also have the cost of the editing software, the cost of, like, you know, HoneyBook that I used or my website um, or PickTime. PickTime, I'm not affiliated with them. Uh, <laughs> this is not promotion. Uh, well, kind of. <laughs> they don't. They don't pay me for this, but uh, pick time is a is what I use to deliver the gallery, the online gallery, when I'm done. So you get an online gallery of digital images uh, sent directly to your email, and that's how you access the photos that I took, you know, for you. Mm-hmm. So that I also really sense. like them. There, there are other programs you can use. I can't think of any names right now, but I heard about pick time. I tried it out. I really liked it. Nice. So that's a lot of behind the scenes work. You said uh, like an an average package might be like three hundred photos. How many pictures are you taking to get to that three hundred photos? Oh at man. The end? Um, <laughs> so I have a tendency to kind of overshoot. Yes. Um, although actually, at least for me, I feel like it's overshooting. It it honestly might be like industry standard. I have no idea. Honestly, it really depends on the like how long I'm there for. So I might be delivering 300, 350 photos for like an eight-hour wedding day. But what all am I taking photos of? So it, yeah, the amount of photos I take really depends on how many things I'm taking photos of. So during a full wedding day, I probably shoot about five or six thousand um, i know yeah uh so that first wedding i was talking about when i first started watching these videos and right. stuff between so i had two cameras and my assistant had one and between the three cameras we had just over nine thousand photos <laughs> that was the first time i overshot anything i was like oh my goodness i have to go through nine thousand photos to give them I think for them, I was only giving them like 250 <laughs> is what we'd agreed on. I also tend to over deliver, which I'm actually fine doing. I liked, I like to give them a little bit more. So if I say I'm going to give you 300 photos, I might give you like 320 or even 350. Just give them all 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> They're not all good. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. Um, but I, yeah, I like to deliver a little more because it's it's kind of like a little gift, especially if it's a smaller wedding or they're on more of a budget and they're like, we can really only afford for you to be here for this many hours and to pay for this many photos. Being able to give them a little extra is, I don't know, I I, I, I hope it's a blessing to them. Um, so so I like to I like to deliver a little more, just like a little gift to them. Although for that wedding, I think I double, I think I gave them like 500 or something <laughs> or like 400 and I told them 250. So, so that was a, like way over delivered and that's something I'm trying to, to work on cutting down. Um, this is just doing like maybe 20 extra on a wedding at most. Um, sometimes it just falls down to like, there's so many photos I just really love and it can be hard to cut it quite down to that number. So I'll give them a few extra. Nice. Yeah. No, I, uh, I'm no photographer by any means, but anytime, anytime I take pictures, I always overtake pictures. And then I'm like, what do I, why do I have to go through 25 pictures of the same shot and like delete, you know, 24? It's, uh, yeah. it's definitely that part is time consuming. And then you're stuck between like four pictures, kind of like the, at the eye doctor when they give you yeah. like two, <laughs> two lenses. You're like, well, which one's the better one? I have no idea. They like switch between the two. And I'm like, <laughs> that one's better. That one's sharper. Wait, no. That one. No, yes. no, that one. No, no. They're both. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's definitely, um, definitely, definitely. Lots of dedication it takes to to do a job like that. So, yeah. um, it sounds like it's it's a passion. Like, right? It's something you've you always loved to do. It's not like yeah. I actually used to hate photography. Really? <laughs> um, so my dad's a photographer. He does it professionally, and I mean. If I remember correctly, he got his first camera when he was like 10 or 11. Um, so he's been doing it for decades and decades. Um, and so as a kid, I, you know, my siblings and I, but I, I feel like it was especially me. 
were always like his guinea pig, <laughs> guinea pigs for like a, a new lens or like a new flash or a new backdrop that he wanted to test out. And so I used to always be like, I'm like, I'd rather watch cartoons or like read a book or like play with my friends. I don't want to stand here and have my photo taken. But then in high school, there was like a photography elective. And I'm like, ooh, that's fun. Let's do that. So I did it. I, I took a class. I actually failed that class, um, which I have a lot of fun telling people, usually after their wedding. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, <laughs> Just so you know, I, I, I failed a photography class. Yeah, what are your qualifications? Uh, just the fail class yeah. <laughs> in high school. I retook it as a senior and got an A. So okay. it, it canceled that F out. But I, yeah, I like to tell people that. And like the reason I failed it wasn't because I was like bad at photography. It, it actually fell down to like organization and that the way that they would like you'd have your project and like two thirds or three quarters of the way into the project, they would give you the information for the next project. So you had this overlap and they're like, when you're done with the first one, start the second one, here's the information. And my brain just couldn't handle that. Yeah. It was like, all right, we're on to this next thing. And so I would oftentimes not finish the project because I'd be working on it. Then they'd give me the information for the next one. And my brain was like, all right, we're on to this now. And then I had a bunch of incomplete projects. So I was able to figure that out and not do that senior year <laughs> and, you know, got the A in the class. But I, yeah, I just like telling people, yeah, yeah, I'm a professional photographer. I failed a photography class in high school. Hey, well, it's like <laughs> the story of Michael Jordan, right? He, he didn't make the high school basketball team and then he uh, came back. So. Yeah, I didn't know that, but there we go. I'm, my, I'm the Michael <laughs> Jordan of photography, hey, guys. there we go. Uh, <laughs> Don't we got... quote me on that. <laughs> Um, that's what we'll refer you on, <laughs> refer, refer you as thanks <laughs> going forward. Yes, that's, that's right. Um, so that's, that's cool. So yeah, it, it's, it wasn't always roses when you thought about photography, but eventually uh, I also started on film. So 35 ooh. millimeter digital, which I actually, I would recommend if anyone is interested in getting into photography, my personal recommendation is to buy a film camera or if your parents or grandparents or aunts and uncles, if they have one that they are willing to part with, get a 35 millimeter camera, buy film, shoot it, get it developed, like learn. The reason I love film is because you don't have a screen that you can look at. You, you don't just take a picture and look at the picture immediately and go, oh, it's too dark. I need to brighten it up. You have to learn how each setting affects the image and then you have to learn you have to be able to look at your lighting and your subject and know what to set your camera to to it, it it's almost a handicap you're mm -hmm. almost handicapped but if you learn how to work with that handicap when you take it off <laughs> Imagine what you can do after that. Like when I switched sure. to a digital camera, I definitely saw my photography greatly improve because I, I learned how to do it on a film camera. But then I was able to take those skills that I had learned and apply it to an area where I can now see my image immediately after. Nice. And learn even more how to how to get a better image. Yeah. No, that's, that's really, that's really cool. So, um, another thing I'm curious about, um, you mentioned like meeting with the couple before the wedding, things like that. How, um, how demanding are couples normally? Like, do they give you like, Hey, this is exactly the kind of shots we want or like what kind of direction do you normally get from folks? I, as of right now, I haven't really gotten a whole lot. So You'll always hear about, you know, bridezillas and groomzillas and all of that. Uh, thankfully, I have not had to deal with anyone like that as of yet. And I really hope I don't have to. Or I hope that if I do, I'll be able to handle it, like, graciously. But as of right now, all the couples I've had have been, like, really trusting and been, you know, we love your work. We love the photos we've seen. So, like tell us what you want from us kind of which has been really nice there have been some things where it's like okay we do want to do this or we don't want to do this my my main communication with them and a lot of times this actually happens before we even book 
before we enter into contract is, you know, what am I taking photos of? Do you want getting ready photos? Do you want, you know, a first look or do you want the first look to happen at the ceremony when you walk down the aisle? Mm -hmm. Um, Do you want family photos? Do you want the reception photographed or do you just want the ceremony and some couple photos? Um, That's the main thing that they tell me about what they want. You know, I just kind of ask, do you want these photos? And they say yes or no. Typically, they kind of let me do my thing, which is nice, but I'm always open. Like, I, I, and I'll tell people, like, I have, I have a Pinterest. I don't use it very often, but I'm like, if you have Pinterest, open it. If you find photos you like, poses you want to do, specific photos you want to recreate, put them on, the, on a board, share it with me, and we'll try to get as many mm-hmm. of those done as we can. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and yeah, those are little things you don't really think about like yeah where is the first look happening what other stuff are you doing before yeah the, before the wedding before the actual ceremony and things like that so um that makes that makes perfect sense so you mentioned that outside of weddings you're also doing other other shoots and other other things like that what uh yeah. what does that look like for you so i yeah i'm not just a wedding photographer i also do engagements just regular couples photos um, high school grad photos, high school senior photos, college grad photos, uh, professional headshots, portraits, if you need those, just taking photos. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've tried to adopt what I've learned from this, you know, from again, watching these professional photographers, especially these professional wedding photographers, like what they've done, because a lot of the same concepts apply throughout photography in general so a lot of what you do at a wedding you can apply to an engagement or just a couple's photo sure and then there are aspects that you can apply to a um you know a senior session or a portrait session um trying to think kind of what that looks like or how it's different it feels like it's it's kind of the same to me um it's photography my my preparation process i guess is a little different sure um you're also not shooting for eight hours probably (laughs) yeah that's true i'm shooting for like at most two um usually what i'll do is i oh and i do family photos too i forgot to mention that i will you know whoever's hiring me i'll talk with them if it's senior photos i'll i'll tell them or or like a engagement i'll say you know go on pinterest find some photos you like or on instagram if you like if your friend got engaged recently and some of their engagement photos had you going, oh my goodness, I want that, like, send it to me. <laughs> Let me see what you want so I can, you know, give you what you want. I can better um, deliver something that's going to, you know, be timeless for you. Something right. that's going to, you know, last forever that you're going to look at every time and go, Wow. Yeah, it's uh, that wow factor. The the wow <laughs> factor, and, and yeah, it's like some of those things are very hard to communicate. So I'm sure getting as many examples as possible. Yeah. I and mean, music is easy; just send us the song you want, you know, and we'll we'll play it. Um, I'm sure it's a little bit more intricate when when you're when you're doing photos. Um, so that's cool. Uh, is that a bigger part? Would you say like a, do you, are you getting more of those shoots now nowadays than weddings? Yeah. Um, in terms of like, you know, price price wise, I, I need a lot more of those to to sure. equal wedding, uh, both, I guess, time and price overall. So I do see a, like, you know, some big shoots, which are like weddings. And then I see a lot of smaller shoots kind of sprinkled throughout. So like I just did some graduation photos uh, for someone graduating from George Fox uh, like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I... I'm still waiting to hear back, but I might be doing some prom photos for someone like tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very last minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of smaller, you know, graduation photos, couples photos. Um, over the summer, I'm hoping to see a lot more senior photos. Uh, working at a camp is kind of helpful, especially because I'm like their main media guy. So I do photos and videos, which means that they're a bunch of, you know, high schoolers coming in for a week that are going to see me doing photos <laughs> and be like, there was this, yo, there was this 
hopefully I'm a cool guy. Uh, I don't want to put words in their mouth. I try to be cool, but ho- hopefully they're going home going, there's this really cool photographer. He was goofy. He was fun. He was dancing on the stage with the camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. I, I want him to do, you know, my senior photos. Mom, I'm, I'm you know going to be a senior next year. I need senior photos. Um, so yeah, hopefully. And I, I've made friends with people that have worked at the camp that are like, you know, high schoolers that are going to be, you know, seniors this next year. So I'm really hoping to, that, you know, they'll reach out to their friend yeah. um, for photos. So no, that's ho- the- hoping to get, you know, more into that. I haven't actually done a whole lot of senior graduation photos, especially graduation, not a whole lot. But I've done a decent amount of like couples and engagements. So I'd like to kind of expand into that mm-hmm. senior photo realm because especially during the summer, you tend to see that that's when everyone's getting their senior photos. So there's kind of this, this rise in demand. Mm -hmm. So if I can kind of get my name out there as a, a good senior photographer, hopefully, you know, word of mouth will spread. People will check out my website, my Instagram and hopefully hire me. Yeah. (laughs) When you just said senior photographer, have you guys looking for a photographer? At all, let me know. How many plugs are you gonna are you gonna make of this? No, when you were that just... was a paid promotion <laughs> by Abel Jones Photography. Uh, we'll have to see the contract for that paid promotion. But <laughs> um, yeah, when, when you were saying senior photographer, I had a different type of senior in mind. I just imagine you going to a retirement center, like, hey, any, any photos? Like, <laughs> all right, Myrtle, let's go. <laughs> That's right. All right, now snap back. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. So are are these are these shoots all over Washington and Oregon, or where? How how far do you have to travel for some of these shoots? So my, you know, I, I say I cover the PNW. I have yet to actually make it to Idaho for a photo shoot. So technically, I cover Oregon and Washington. Um, most of my photo shoots end up in Oregon. Mostly just because that's, you know, where I live, I'm in this really small town on the peninsula in Washington. It's a really secluded area, so I'm not getting a lot of shoots there, but I have, you know, friends and family, and I grew up in the Portland area, so I have right. a lot more word and word of mouth and connection out in that area, so most of my shoots have been in the Portland area. The furthest I've gone so far was Silver Falls. I believe it's called Silver Falls. It's like east of Salem. Mm. I think it's a little southeast of Salem. So it's like down and over. And from, you know, because I was leaving for that shoot from the peninsula and it took me almost four hours, I think, three and a half. Most of my shoots end up being about two and a half hours away because that's how long it takes me to get from home to Portland. So, yeah, that's not... It's Moving back to Portland will be really nice. Although I can't really charge travel fees anymore. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, it's not that it's about the money. It's not. I mean, how many plugs have you made on this? <laughs> it's definitely about the All of the plugs have been non-paid promotions. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. For uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that that should be a nice nice uh adjustment for you when you come back to portland also means i don't have to change my oil as often yeah, there's a lot more that goes <laughs> into it for sure for sure a lot of wear and tear in the car <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you know, for for you growth going forward is mostly focused on more of these like you said graduation shoots and things like that is yeah. that kind of the so I'm, I mean, just more shoots in general, whatever that ends up looking like. Um, but that, that would be growth in terms of, you know, like numbers. Uh, but I would also like to continue to improve in, you know, my skills as a photographer. So continue to raise um, rates is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, <laughs> not, not quite. I mean that that will that would be a part of it, but I I do try to keep my costs low because I know photography can be expensive. Hiring a photographer for a wedding or whatever you're doing can be really stressful. Um, 
And so I try to keep my costs as low as possible, especially because it's not my main source of income. It is, it's a, it's a hobby and a side gig. And so because I'm not reliant on these photo shoots to pay for all of my bills, it allows me to keep my costs at a, at a lower rate than some of what you'll see out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I am working on trying to raise my rates a little. However, I, you know, I'm, I've seen photographers charge twice what I'm charging for the exact same thing that I'm offering. I don't think I would ever want to charge that much for a wedding unless you're asking me to fly out somewhere. Um, but I, I do want to be able to, you know, raise my rates a little so that I'm, you know, at least somewhere near, you know, what the industry is at. Um, especially as I'm moving and I think, you know, with rent, my bills are about to get a lot higher. And so now photography will be helping pay some of those bills, still not all of them, which will still allow me to keep costs low, but I am probably going to start raising those soon. Nice. Once I get more skills though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the, the money thing, it, it, it makes sense. Like I, as, as I've started to kind of, you know, do the wedding thing. Like you, you kind of start to realize like, yes, it seems like it's a high number in some cases, but you, you don't want to be operating on a loss. Like, yeah, it just makes no sense for you to pour in all this time and money. Um, you know, equipment is not cheap. Fly, no, it's travel not. is not cheap. <laughs> um, you know, all the editing time and, you know, you could be doing another side gig, but you're yeah. putting in time to edit and stuff like that. Um, it all adds up. So it's, it's important to, to kind of, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard when you try to be like that nice guy and like not overcharge people, but it's also like, cause I, I tend to be on that side yeah. too, where it's like, you kind of start to have to realize what you're worth. Right. Yeah. And I, I think I'm finding a, a pretty good balance between, you know, those two things. And that still allows me to be the nice guy. And honestly, that's like, that's why I don't have prices listed on my website because it you know, my, my whole thing is that I will work with you. Like, let's find something that you're comfortable with that I'm also comfortable with. I'm not going to say, you know, it's this much for a wedding and this is what you get. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, pro I'll start out, usually I'll start out and say, this is my base package or, or this is my, my main package. You know, this is how much it is. This is how many hours. This is how many final photos. Um, and does this work with your budget? And if they're like, no, we're looking for something smaller then I can say, all right, how about this? And I can, I can switch it up and offer something that'll work. Um, yeah. So I, I've, I feel like I've found for, at least for me, something that works well in terms of, you know, I'm not overcharging. I might be underselling myself a little bit, but I'm also, you know, trying to work with people. Um, that fit within their budget. Mm -hmm. Most of the weddings and stuff that I've done have been, you know, people that I know where either they are just, you know, where they're at in their financial state might not be great. Um, and I get that. I'm not in a great financial <laughs> state either. Um, or, you know, maybe their parents aren't paying for their wedding. They're paying it for it themselves. And so they've got a really cut cost. Um, and I'm, totally open to work with that and, you know, do what I can to help them out nice. while still also gain, you know, <laughs> paid to do a job. Right. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense. Um, it, it seems like in, you know, the wedding industry and, and photography and stuff, it seems like there's a lot of, um, options, a lot of competition out there. Like, I guess to put it, to put it plainly, like, uh, how do you, I guess, differentiate yourself or like, how do you, why do folks come to you instead of someone else? Would you say normally? Um, I think for me, it's, I'm really hoping it's word of mouth. Um, you know, friends, family, people that I've done weddings for that have enjoyed working with me, being able to recommend me or tell their friends about me. Uh, part of it's also come from, people at a wedding seeing me um, there shooting and 
liking what they see. Like, you know, I'm out on the dance floor dancing and taking <laughs> photos and they're like, wow, like this guy, he's fun, he's goofy, but he's like, he's professional at the same time. It's it's that customer service. I, it's, I was going to say, <laughs> it reminds me of you at JCPenney. Like 100%. A- it's, authenticity, right? Yeah. You've, you've got to throw on that customer service face, but without being like super fake. Yeah. You know, you often hear people say like, you know, people respect honesty. People want honesty. They want to see the real you. Um, and so it's, it's, it's kind of finding a balance there because, you know, I'm not going to stand around cussing up a storm. Not that I normally do that, but like, <laughs> normally, <you know. laughs> um, not, not that I do that, <laughs> but even if I did do that regularly, I'm not going to want to do that at a wedding. That's right. not very professional. So it's, it's, you know, having that professional air atmosphere without being stuck up while still being able to have fun and be goofy, um, and just be friendly with people. Yeah. So, so for me, like I, I love people. That's why I do weddings and engagements and senior photos because I, I love people. Um, and I like being able to like capture those moments, those candid moments that when someone laughs, when someone's, you know, tearing up because their best friend or their daughter or their son is getting married. Um, so I, I'm passionate about one photography, but two just people. And I think that that is visible both through the photos that I provide right. and through the way that I interact with people. And, and if it's, you know, I, I, I'm speaking, you know, from what I think, I really hope like, like, this is how I feel. I hope that's evident to people when they interact with me. Yeah. So. No, even sitting across from you, man, I, I see it. Like that's, and yeah, that's, you gotta watch your levels. I, I might talk too loud when I get really excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. Like, yeah, it's, it's genuine. Like I said, it reminds me of, of who you were when we worked together is like, yes, you're professional. Uh, Cause you have to, you're, you, know, you you're have working. to be. Yeah. 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 You're working. You have to be professional, but you were still fun loving and you're still like, you know, nice to everyone and, and full of energy. So like, I, I see that. I see that, you know, people would want to be around a photographer like that. Um, instead of someone that's going to be, you know, annoyed or, yeah. or, you know, professional, but stone faced, you know, like you also have to be able to like, for me, at least I, I think that I'm flexible. I think I can like roll with, you know, a wedding day is, almost never going to go exactly yeah. how you plan it out to be. And you have to be able to roll with those punches, go with the flow. Um, and if you can do that, like people are going to see that and they're going to say like, you know, they're, they're going to be amazed at that and they're going to, you know, it looks, it reflects well on you. Right. Um, and it's like, you know, when you're in retail, they want you to be professional management does cause you're representing the company and you know you might lose your job if you're not doing things <laughs> if you're doing things that misrepresent the company if right. you're not doing things professionally and in the same way even though like i'm my own corporate i'm representing myself and like people aren't going to shop at my store anymore <laughs> if <laughs> if i'm unprofessional or if i'm you know creating this air of you know i don't care um I'm trying to think of the right word, but that, I guess kind of that, like, you know, it's just a job. I'm just here. Sure. Like I'm not invested in it. I'm not apathy, passionate kind of about like, it. Yeah. I'm, I'm ap- apathetic, I guess. Yeah. So, so I like, which I don't want to be. Yeah. So I'm representing myself and, and when I'm second shooting for someone, I'm representing them and I'm also representing myself. Yeah. So I, you know, I want to make sure that I have that, customer service skill to be able to represent whoever I'm working for or with and myself in a, in a good manner while also still being passionate and fun. Yeah. And, and it'll, it looks like it's been paying off and I'm sure it will um, going forward. I think that's something that I've tried to work on is being genuine to myself, not putting on a face. Um, I tend to be more introverted. So like, especially in, in like crowds like that, I'm just like trying to like, you know, keep, <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I gotta like, you know, like, like 
I am working on just being genuine and true to myself and the people that should be around me will be attracted to that. The people that, you know, want to work with me will be attracted to that and they'll yeah. want to, you know, they'll want to book you again because of that or they'll tell their friends about you because of that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, it's really cool. That's what you've stuck with and, um, kind of what you're, you try to emulate going, going forward. Yeah. And I mean, like, so the wedding I'm doing in November, for example, um, I was able to book that wedding at a young adults retreat at the camp that I'm, I'm at right now. So at the like beginning of the year, it was actually over new year. So yeah. So it was like January 1st and I was talking with them and I found out they were engaged and like getting married and I I was like, all right, I, I, I'm like, I have to throw a plug out in there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, guys, I'm sorry, but I'm like, I, I got to. And so I, like, I pulled out my business cards and I, I showed it to them. I talked with them and, you know, there, so it was the, the bride's mom who contacted me. Cause I believe they're, you know, the ones who would be hiring me, um, but as we were talking and figuring out like a price point and a, and a deal that worked with their budget, like the mom told me, she's like, you know, whatever it is, like, we'll make it work because they said that they want you and which just warms my heart, you know, I'm yeah. just like, oh, thanks. But it's, you know, it falls back to that. How do I interact with people? And, you know, again, that customer service, that how am I presenting myself to people yeah yeah customer service i guess that's just you know the easy way to put it but it just you know how you are with people how you interact with people people remember how you make them feel and that what you say like that's yeah and i think that's a big part of that is just how you act yeah that's the that's the act part of interact right it's because am i am i making them laugh yeah. or am i like <laughs> making them cry not in a good way like <laughs> yeah yeah are you are just they... being annoyed every time they ask you to do something or ask for something or are you like you said rolling with the punches and just like yeah are they in, enjoying this like this moment of having their photo taken yeah. or are they hating every second of it yeah yeah exactly um which is yeah that's awesome that's awesome what would you say i guess kind of in in you know the last few years and as you've tried to develop it and um just kind of grow the, the photography um side of of you uh what would you say have been like your biggest challenges or the biggest difficulties i think organization you touched on a little bit um anything else um hmm. well yeah definitely organization biggest challenges for me sometimes i just you know i have trouble getting the word out there uh if you look at my Instagram, I'm, I do not post every day. I'm really bad at posting on social media. Some, sometimes I'll post like two or three days in a row. Um, but most of the time there's usually like at least a week between each post, sometimes more. Uh, I used to have a separate photography account and I got rid of it cause I went like a year without posting anything on there. Mm -hmm. And it just, I'm just like, I can't manage two accounts, so I just merged them and do it all on one now. Um, I think that kind of falls into organization. I'm trying to work on like planning out my posts. Um, I need, I really, I think to get the word out there and to really start to get more clients, I need to show more of my work. So I do need to be posting more. Um, yeah, I did an engagement session or some save the date photos back in March, I think it was. Um, I've posted one photo from that. So if I start posting more, you, you know, I did a wedding in December. I haven't posted any photos from that. Mm. So like I, I'll put things on my story, but like for actual posts, I need to start doing more of those. Uh, that's been a struggle for me. So I really need to start like planning those out, figuring out the right caption and hashtags is also <laughs> sometimes a pain. Um, but I, I think I need to just kind of loosen up on that and be like, you know, maybe, maybe my caption is just had a fun time at this wedding or like loved getting to take these photos. Like, it, I don't think I need to put as much thought into it as I've been trying to do. Yeah. And yeah. Those are probably my two biggest is organization and posting. I think it's, um, there's always those like mental barriers you put yeah. for yourself. Like you said, like captions or hashtags and things like that, like little excuses you make for yourself. I, I definitely struggle with it too. And um, it seems like it's a bigger deal than it really is. But once you start actually doing that thing yeah. um, consistently, it just becomes second nature. 
Um, but yeah, and I mean, I have friends who are photographers who I look up to, and like, you know, they post often. Like, they post a lot, and they post often. Yeah, and I'm yeah, I'm like, if I, honestly, if I did that, I feel like I it would probably mean more bookings because there's more to look at if you look at my right. instagram you're going to see a lot more and more recent stuff and more like, recent yeah yeah and so if, if you look at my instagram right now you know i went to iceland in august and i forgot nice. to post i posted a few photos from that but so like a few weeks ago i just posted a bunch of photos for that so right now it's like you know grad photos Iceland, 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 <laughs> uh, engagement photos, Iceland, and like a few, uh, and then, you know, some weddings and stuff. But it, there's this big break in my posting where it's like, you know, I, I want people to see the photos because I'm trying to sell prints of them and such, but it's not my, it, I just, I'm trying to book people for, you know, weddings and engagements and seniors and stuff. And they're not going to be like, wow, that's a great photo of a sheep. You should do my engagement <laughs> photos. Like, so I just need, yeah, I need to work on posting more so that more of what you see is more of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it's it's hard um, to kind of find that niche. Like, yeah. like if, if that's what you want to focus on, you want to post just, like, you, you kind of need to post just that, but then you're also interested in this and interested yeah. in this, and this is a cool shot. Like, it's hard. Well, it's, I, yeah, I think it's fine to have a few of those. Like if you go travel, especially if yeah. you're like traveling for a wedding and you're going to spend, you know, a week in France or Italy or something, and you take some right. street photos, you want to show those off too. So I think it's fine to post a few of those as long as it's like you're still posting consistently what your main focus is. And that's that's an area that I'm struggling in right now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, it also kind of feels overwhelming because I'm like thinking back. I'm like, I've got photo <laughs> shoots I did, you know, like that wedding in December. We're six months away, five months away from that, and I haven't posted anything. So I'm like, I've got that. I've got all these other photo shoots I did right after. I have some photo shoots I did before that I haven't. I'm like, I've got six months of stuff that yeah. I haven't posted. I I feel you, man. I I've been overwhelmed myself with like trying to get the podcast, get the word out there. Yeah. Um, my biggest thing. And like the thing I told myself that's going to help me grow it is to get little reels like for Instagram reels oh, or yeah. for TikTok, um, short videos. But when you have like an hour, an hour and a half of video to get down to one minute, that's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, like it's just it's been something that I've been, it just gets overwhelming, especially yeah. when this isn't your full time thing. Right. Cause you're, you know, Definitely, you have a job yeah. and you have other priorities and other things that you're working sometimes on. Sometimes I just want to sit on my couch and watch TV, man. Yeah, like, sometimes you I need, need I need my me time. <laughs> sometimes you need that. Um, sometimes you definitely need that. And it's just, it's, it's hard to, to find that, um, make that time, be consistent yeah. while still keeping up with everything else. But I'm sure, I'm sure it'll work out for you. I'm excited to, to see it work out for you. Thanks. Yeah. So if, if I'm someone that either likes photography or thinks about, you know, or has thought about photography and is trying to break into, you know, start getting shoots and starting, starting to get weddings or just graduation shoots or whatever it might be. What would you say like would be the biggest piece of advice you have for folks like that? Or how, how would you say they should, what should they focus on to get started? Um, yeah, I would say, well, I'd, I'd give a few steps. So again, and this is me personally, cause I'm really passionate about film photography as well. Um, that's how I started and it worked out pretty well for me, I think. Um, so, so I would start off by saying if you can get a film camera, um, watch YouTube videos. Honestly, there's some great photographers out there. You can learn a lot. Again, I would recommend John Branch for photography on YouTube. He's got some amazing videos on how to pose people, both for like solo photos, couple photos, um, he'll walk you through engagement sessions and weddings. Uh, I, I think he's a great learning tool. So I would say, you know, watch videos and practice Yeah. that like, how, how do you learn any skill you practice? Um, I started off by just, I carried my camera around wherever I went in high school, except the only a few times did I actually bring it to school. But usually like if I was going on a retreat or I was going camping or hiking or sometimes just walking in downtown Portland with my friends 
I had my camera with me. I was snapping shots. I have a shoe box in my room with like 30 rolls of film that I haven't developed yet, but they're all from mm. those like four years. Um, so don't do that. Develop your film, <laughs> see what your pictures are and learn from them. But just practice once you, you know, get yourself familiar with the process of taking photos, talk to your friends. I mean, most of my photo shoots that I did when I, when I decided I wanted to do this professionally, you know, I didn't get paid for the first two years or so mm. because I was just, I was asking my friends, I was like, Hey, can we go take photos so I can practice, you know, so I can get these senior photos, um, or, or I was charging a, a very small amount. I did one of my old roommates um, back in like 2016 or 17. I did his engagement photos. And I look back on them. I'm kind of bummed. I'm like, I can do so much better now. But, you know, I got paid for the skill that I was at at that point. So, like, it was, you know, I didn't charge them a whole lot because I was, I was new to it. Um but it gave me an opportunity to practice doing an engagement shoot um, and to learn, you know, how to, you know, not be noticed by mm. the, you know, the fiance so that she doesn't go, huh, why is there a photographer here? Interesting. Oh. So like that, that photo Yikes. shoot, we were at a coffee shop. Um, and so I, I actually, I'm pretty sure I went the whole like, you know, like, Looney Tune style newspaper up, like <laughs> with a hole for the camera lens. <laughs> no, no so, so so not for that. Just when she walked in, just so that she wouldn't recognize me. Um, once they sat down, they started playing a board game, um, and so I was able to just kind of be like, "All right, newspaper down, camera up, let's go." Uh, and they didn't really notice me. I did a, a different engagement shoot. I think it was early twenty twenty one. Or it might have been like April 2020, like right when everything happened. But I did an engagement shoot. And he, so so my friend hired me and his, you know, soon to be fiance at the point didn't want photos of the actual engagement because she didn't want another person there to ruin the moment. She wanted it to be her and him and she didn't want anyone else there. But he wanted photos of, of that moment. So he hired me, and so they were in this little clearing um, in the forest behind his house. So I just went up the hill in the bushes, and I'm, like, behind <laughs> yeah. this tree with my camera on a tripod. And the, the tree, it, it like, split in two is one of those, like, V ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've got my I, – I borrowed this really long lens from Paparazzi my dad. style. <laughs> exactly. And so it was this 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and I had it all the way at two, 200 and I'm just shooting between the the like V branches of this tree. And just like I wore <laughs> green pants and a green hoodie and brown shoes. I'm like camouflage in <laughs> in these bushes. And she didn't notice me right away. She didn't notice me till afterwards. And by that point, she was fine because it didn't ruin the moment. Although I was a little scared because I the camera I had was a DSLR and their shutters are pretty loud. Yeah. I'm like, I really hope she can't hear the. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the camera I have now because it's it's uh, mechanical shutter is really quiet because uh, it's a mirrorless camera and I mm. can switch it to an electronic shutter if I want and just turn off the sound of the shutter and have it be completely silent. Although I do like having a little bit of a sharp sound, so I usually leave it on the mechanical. Nice. So you can. <laughs> you can dance on the dance floor and you can also hide in the bushes. You're a man exactly. of many talents. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, but yeah, so, so if you're getting started, you know, practice with your friends, um, find people, you know, uh, whether they're just doing it for fun. If it's, you know, just a friend that you want to practice portraits with so that you can do senior photos or grad photos, or if it's, you know, uh, a couple you know and you want to practice engagement photos or just couple photos and doing photos with them find people to practice with if you're comfortable with your skill add a price to it um one of my things when i started off is i was like you know if if i ask someone to go on a photo shoot with me so i can practice i can't say Hey, can I take some portraits of you? All right, that's going to be a hundred bucks. <laughs> like, I can't really 
charge if I'm asking you to go on a photo shoot with me. That was kind of my thing. But uh, but if you approach me and you're like, hey, man, will you do some portraits of me? How much? I, I would give you a price. So that's kind of how I was when I started off. I felt uncomfortable. Usually I wouldn't actually give a price unless they said how much. <laughs> if they're like, hey, will you do some portraits? I'm like, yeah, sure. And like, So that helped me get started. But soon I started adding a price. And most of the time when someone asks you, usually they understand unless it's, you know, like it influencer her on Instagram and they're like, I'll give you exposure. Like, no, don't do that. Um, Have you gotten those? I think once or twice I did. And I'm just like, nah, dude, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> just no. Just do, do my wedding for exposure. <laughs> yes. Because exposure pays my bills. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so add a price to it, especially when you're feeling more comfortable. But just keep in mind, like, don't go and ask someone if you can take photos of them and then try to charge them. Like, in, yeah, if if they ask, then, you know, you can you can put a price on it because they're asking you for a service. But don't offer a service <laughs> and then try to get money from them. It's like those that's those, not cool. Those people in uh, touristy places where they like, yeah. take a picture of oh you. Oh my they goodness! Make, like, here's a picture, ten bucks. I went to New York and everyone told me, like my dad, my dad's friend, all these adults were like, you know, you're going to be in Times Square and there's going to be all these people in costumes. You're going to want to take pictures. Don't because they'll harass you. <laughs> and like that was actually a thing. Like they would actually harass people because they would be like oh come take a picture and then they would harass you too you give them like five bucks if you take a picture of your kid with you know elmo or someone um but the police cracked down on it i was reading up on it they cracked down on it so most of the people there like if you t if, if if i'm in the crowd with my camera and i snap a quick photo of them usually they won't harass me mm. um but like if they come up and they're like, oh, take a photo with me and you do, then they'll usually harass you for money. But everyone was like, just don't take photos of them. I'm like, you're saying don't. But now I want to. <laughs> I'm like, now I want to see how sneaky I can be. Like green pants in the bushes <laughs> across the street. Hey, there are no bushes in Times Square. <laughs> it's concrete jungle, That's the first man. giveaway. <laughs> I actually got some great ones. Um, I got one of Elmo where uh, you can actually see because the, the mouthpiece of the helmet is actually what they see through and you can see the eyes <laughs> through the mouthpiece. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like spitting on oh, you. Okay. Um, and yeah, and they have like their hand up because they were like adjusting part of their mask. And so it, but they've got the glove off and it looks really weird. Um, I have another one where- You have to send that to me. I'll be very yeah. great to go in there. <laughs> I have one where like Woody from Toy Story like caught me taking a picture. And so I just have a picture of Woody flipping me off. <laughs> uh, Woody from Toy Story Definitely flipping me, me off. Um, oh, yeah, I'll have to find it. But yeah, yeah totally. Um, yeah, it's it was a crazy experience, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet. All right, that's like totally unrelated no, to what we were talking that's about. That's lots of fun. Lots of fun. That's how man. my mind works. I think... Uh, no, that's, that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. I think that's great advice for anyone looking to start out. I think you have a cool story and um, I definitely learned a lot today. Um, so I guess any uh, any parting thoughts or any parting plugs uh, you want to <laughs> make before we say goodbye? Uh, photography is so awesome. I love, love doing photography so much. Um, it's rare that I go somewhere without my camera, except for like work, you know. But if like if I'm going to the beach or, you know, even if I'm just going to hang out with my friends, chances are I'll have my camera with me because I just, yeah, photography is awesome. And if you want to get into it, like do it. It's a lot of fun. Even if you, you know, if it's just a hobby, I do it as a hobby as well. Yeah. Yeah. Photography is cool. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. Yeah. I was going to say, that's <laughs> probably the one plug you haven't made. Where, where, where can people find you? All right. Yeah. So... <laughs> I'm on Instagram. It's it's either able dot dunes or able underscore dunes. I think it's underscore. So A B E L underscore D U N E S. Um, and then on Facebook, Abel H Jones is my um, personal profile, and then Abel Jones Photography. And then if you do Abel Jones Photo dot com, that's my website. Nice. 
Yeah. Awesome. You can also find my Instagram and Facebook through my website. So if I gave you the wrong Instagram, <laughs> just go to ablejonesphoto.com. The wrong Abel is going to get a bunch of follows <laughs> uh, randomly after it. this. Um, no, that's awesome, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate you sharing. This was really awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of fun. Let, let us let us know. Find Abel and ask him more questions if you want to find out more. And uh, otherwise, tune in uh, next week. Sweet. Nice. That was fun.